things are getting better. I say things are getting better. I say things are getting better. Say with me, things are getting better. For the Lord is on his throne. Things are getting better. Say it loud. Say it loud. For the Lord is on his throne. Things are getting better. For the Lord is on his throne. Things are getting better. In Jesus' name. Do you believe it? Good. Give the Lord a hand. Hear me. When God told me to build Miracle Center, I had $120. And he finished it. Now is the time. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness there. I had $514 when we started Faith Arena. It ended with millions paid for. Go start it. Say that everybody. That's all. The reason many of your dream have never come to pass is that you have not started it. You, are, you want to do it by power, by might. And God says it shall be done by my spirit. You can look around now and no dead old because it was started. I said, Lord, how do we start university? He said, I told you I will build my church. If I build Miracle Center, I build a Bible school, training people from all nations of the earth, and build a hospital that took over from faith, faith, city of faith, and it's alive and bustling. He said, you just tell me I'm willing to do what you say. And now I'm glad to tell you, I have $1,000 ready to start a university. Did you hear me? I have got $1,000 ready to start a university. If 120 can do Miracle Center, 514 can do Faith Arena, 1,000 can start a university. Give me a shout of yes! When I was here in March, I told you that God told me the reason for the reason for recession is absent from source. That's why America is in recession. She's turned her back to her source. She's using computer to pray. Many Christians are now using computer Bible. Instead of search the scripture, they are pressing button. The Bible says, search the scripture, or you are pressing button. For even the Bible, I have received five computer Bibles. I don't know where they are. Because the Bible didn't say press button, it says search the scripture. I want to spend time to look for where Ruth is in the Bible and find it difficult to find that to press button and what somebody else say. Come out. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Turn to it. Page. Message number two. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. D E U. Start from there. Deuteronomy 28. Those of you with computer Bible, press it. Deuteronomy 
It's not everything that is from God. Very soon you are going to have prayer Bible. You press button to pray. The Bible says, pour out your heart before God. Read me verse 1 and then jump to verse 7. Read it loud, verse 1. Hear me, stop there. It shall what? Now the first scripture we read, Luke chapter 5. It came to pass. Now it shall come to pass. Are you expecting anything in your life? Yes. I said, do you expect anything from God? Yes. It shall come to pass. Yes. The absence from your source is the reason for recession. When you begin to live by your salary, you'll never be satisfied for life. Bible say he suffered no man to do them wrong. He fed them 40 years in the wilderness with manna from heaven. You need some manna. Your salary is good, but the provision of God is better. Somebody say loud amen. amen. Tithe and offering is good, but miracle is better. Verse 1, read it. Excuse me, excuse me. When? 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 It shall come to pass from this day. Did you hear me? Go ahead. The next verse. The Lord shall say it loud. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come. Say blessings are coming upon me, upon me, upon me, and overtake me. Verse 7. Right. Let me tell you why God made this statement. You can't prosper without having enemies. You can't do well without having enemies. So, what God is going to do, before what I want to tell you now, is to take care of your enemies first. Gilbert, are you there? Before God open you the door that no man can close, he will bind the enemy for you first. I asked God one day, Dr. Isaiah, why did you say, if I open the door, no man can shut it? He said, because I will remove the hinges. So when any man try to close it, the hinges are gone. Say yes! There's a door there. Take the hinges away and try to close it. You will walk till you die. The door cannot be closed. That's what God is going to do to your enemies from today. Say yes! Somebody asked me, say, Papa Idahosa, why is it that you always have trouble? Why do you always have problem? Life is problem oriented. 
but God is problem solving. And the reason many of you have no problem with the devil is because you are walking the same direction. You can't collide with the man you are going the same direction. Stand up, son. Come here. Prophet Isaiah, tell us, go. Say to us, go. You all right? I'm fine. You fine? I'm blessed. Good. Stand there. Let's hear. Tell us, go. Go. Why did we collide? Opposite directions. We are coming from opposite direction. Those who never collide with the devil are walking the same direction with him. The reason many of you have no trouble is because you are dead. There's no problem in cemetery. Have you ever seen two cops fighting in the funeral home? Two dead men fighting at the funeral home? Then you say, excuse me, what happened to both of you? When they talk, they go home. Dead men don't fight. And the reason the devil don't fight some of you is that you are dead. He will gain nothing to look for your trouble. But I'm glad to tell you, God is going to give you double for your troubles. Say yes! He's going to take care of my enemy before he would do for me what I want to tell you now. Now how many really, really, really indeed are set for the astonishing miracle in their lives? Can you say yes to that? Take my message today more as prophetic words than throwing words to you. And if you want to know what a man says, whether it's right or wrong, go see what he has done. Judge me by what God has used me to do. I have preached to more white than any black man born. And I've preached to more black than any white man born. And I've done more than any white man combined can do with nothing. So I know what I'm telling you this morning. Verse 8, read it now. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee. What does it mean? All you have before will work for. But this one shall be different. All you ever had before came as a request. Father bless me and he bless you. The next stage is commanded blessing. That's where I am now in life. I used to fast 40 days, 40 nights. Somebody asked me the other day in England, do you fast and pray? I said, no, I pray fast. (laughs) When God tells me, Go for seven days, no water, no food. I do it fast. When it says 40 days, I do it fast. When it says one day, I do it fast. 
When you say not at all, eat all you can eat, I do it fast. <laughs> I fast pray now. When you are young, your brain can be twisted. But when you begin to hear from God, and I'm glad to tell you, it is the Lord speaking to you right now. He shall command the blessings upon thee. And upon thy store, what? Houses. Some of you have never had faith to ask God for houses. Church of God Mission Collector has 104 church buildings going on right now. 104 and 36 in Benin. Building project. And God is saying, I shall command my blessings upon thy store houses. Are you ready for it? Yeah. It's time to stop struggling and start expecting. Yeah. Can you say amen? Yeah. The Lord shall command. Why did the Bible use the word command? When God sends it by command, the enemy is already out of the way. So it will get to you whether you are ready or not. You hear that? The next blessing is coming to you whether you prayed or fasted or not. What is commanded? <laughs> and guess what? Any blessing commanded by God never miss your home address. It doesn't stop at the Baptist church before coming to living word. It comes straight. Why? It's commanded. Why? Jesus is the way, the life, and the truth. Why? Because God knows your home address. Two years ago, I called this woman of fire and lightning. I said, I heard your message. You preach here. He preached it here. And when he finished, we drove in the same car together. He preached here, here. I sat here, she sat here. When she was introduced to preach, she jumped up and prayed and did all she knows to do best. I said, get out of debt! Get out of debt! Get out of debt! Huh. I said, I'm glad you preach it. And you are going to do it yourself. She said, I'm trying. I said, no, you don't try. You get out. That's what you preach. Get out of debt. You get out first. The only way your message will work is when you get out of debt. And we went home. We prayed. We wept before God. And I said, go home. Tell your husband. The next six months, every debt you owe will be paid. The church, the house, the car. The three major things in your life. I say you can't preach it to people. And you live in the absence of it. I say I live in Africa. I owe no man nothing. No dime. I say no dime. I say you are too precious. To owe anybody anything. Die. Die. I owe no one when you die. Because a good man liveth it an inheritance. Not death. She went home. She said, what do I do? I told her, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I'm coming to join you to do this. And in six months or less, today she has Mercedes Benson's. Um, what's the name? Huh? I thought it was in my name, Mercedes Benson. <laughs> It's Benz. Okay. Free of charge. Home, free of charge. Church, free of charge. Now she can pray for you. And your prayer will be answered. Because she's out of death. When a man owe him pray for you to get out of death. That prayer can hardly be answered. Because he's owing. When a sick man pray for your healing, you can hardly be healed. 
Because he's sick. But when a woman out of death pray for you to be out of death, what God has done for her, he will do it for you. Can you say amen? And any of you children, just in case Jesus comes tomorrow, I'm not going to die. I'm not dying. I, I promise him I wait for him here. I want to obey him to occupy till he comes. Amen. Hallelujah. But just in case, for any reason, the trumpet sound and you are still here. And somebody came and said, your papa is owing me one dime. Tell him he's a liar. I don't owe. And I don't marry people's wife. I owe no man anything. No man is big enough for me to owe debt. God is too big to fail to supply all my needs. Yes. And the reason some of you have nothing is because you have no needs. So God has nothing to supply. When you wake up tomorrow, pack all your bills and say, God, you promised to pay all my bills. Don't show him half. And the problem I have in this country is that when you have big problem, you take it to the bank. When you have small one, you bring it to the church. As if the bank is bigger than God. Come on. And God is bigger than City Co. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. The Lord shall command his blessings upon thee. The Lord shall command. Command. Finish the last words there. In thy storehouses. In all that thou settest thy hand. To what? Unto. Unto. Unto, set your hand out. Say, God, you are commanding your mighty miracles upon this side, this side, this side, this side, this side. Command it upon me in Jesus' name. Say loud, Amen. Be tired of trickling. Believe him for the commanded miracle. That's what he did for you in Miami. From zero to surplus. When you were trying to be a pastor, you couldn't. When God made you a pastor, it came from the east, west, north, south. He commanded it. If I ask you who brought you here this morning, you may not even be able to tell. God commanded you to be here. For me to leave mom at home with thousands to come here, I'm commanded by the commander in chief. That's why I'm here. When I told Dr. Coletta I was going, I'm leaving her behind. She said, Papa, are you going? I said, uh -huh. I'm under authority. God commanded me to be here. Verse 9, everybody. The Lord shall Stop there. Many of you have, have succeeded in the past and you are not established. But from now, stand to your feet. From now, say from now, from now. The, Lord the Lord shall, shall establish, me. establish me. Say it. The Lord shall establish me. Lord shall establish me. Yes. The Lord shall establish me. He said, and holy people, which is good. What does that mean? When he establishes you and makes you holy, he protects what you have. God told me, and I told you, he told me, many Christians are praying for success, and they are not praying for establishment. So when they die, nobody remember they lived. Walk around with me. Walk around with me. Say, Heavenly Father, it's time for you to establish me. Heavenly Father, I've succeeded 
I want to succeed. That's not enough. Establish me. Establish me. Establish me. Establish me. Use me for posterity. For children not born yet to remember that I ever lived because of you who have established me. Who has established me? You are establishing me. From now, I shall be established for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 10. Where you are, don't move. Read it, verse 10. And all the people say that loud. Go ahead. And all the people of the earth eh, shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in what? I want to please take this out of your head. Open your eyes and look at me eyeball to eyeball. If you are afraid to prosper, you can help people. Yes, yes. Say, yes, Lord. Yes. Now he says to you today, and I want you to hear it. The Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. That means the dress you wore to Nigeria is not the one you are wearing back. That means the car you used yesterday can be changed today. And let me tell you the secret. The Lord shall make it. If it's you to do it, that's very hard. We are suffering for Jesus in Africa. <laughs> when I asked the driver now, go bring the car out. He said, which of them? The Lord shall make thee plenteous. Prophesy with your mouth. Kola baha kosoto. Elebomo. Secondly, plenteous in goose. In the fruit of your body, the seed of your ground, the Lord shall make thee pentious in goose to the glory of his name. And you say, Amen. Amen. Hear me. This church, a few years from now, shall be the headquarter. Living faith in Chicago. Living word in Houston, living word in Dallas, living word in Atlanta. Jesus, people, church in Dallas, in Texas, where others die, God give us life. Somebody say, Yes! We don't die with the dying, we live with the living. shall make thee I have tried for 20 years to be poor God refuse 20 years I've told you the story I fasted and said God because of the political situation because of the general situation until 5 years ago the president of Nigeria looked at me like this. He said, your grace. I said, yes. He said, you make God sweet to serve. You make God sweet to serve because of the way he has blessed you. He said, this is my phone number. The vice president gave me his bedroom phone number. When I was poor, 
Nobody gave me their home number. Did you hear what I'm saying? David said, I have said in my prosperity, I shall not be moved. The Lord shall make thee plenteous. Take it as prophetic. Take it. Whatsoever, whatever direction you set your hand shall be blessed. Be creative. Re, re establish your life. Consolidate and 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 extend yourself. Don't hook down. Stretch out. Rediversify yourself. We started with one church. Now nearly 7,000 churches. I can't pastor two churches, but God gave me men and women to pastor thousands of churches. The Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. Why? Because he commanded you feed the hungry, clothe the naked. With all the cars we had at home this week, we were short of cars. Too many, but not enough when there are too many people to use it. It shall make you plenteous in goods. White missionaries used to come to Africa and say they are going to suffer for Jesus. Now it's a lie. We have proved mango tree can be God's tree. Snakes in Africa have all gone to Miami Zoo. Verse 12. Lord shall open. The Lord, everybody read it loud. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures. Heavens to give thee what? Pray. And what? To thy land and his season. And to bless all of the works of thy hand. Give me a yes, Jesus. Listen to me. When God says, I shall open unto thee my good treasures, it means there was something closed. Yes. That means that where you have been getting your blessing was not from God. It was through the sweat of your brow. So you boast. This is the car I sweat to buy. This is the house I sweat to buy. Sweat is a cost, not a blessing. I used to boast of how much I sweat until I read that when God cursed man, he sweat for the first time. Otherwise, Adam was nowhere when God gave him the whole world. That is the latest thing the Lord shall command upon thee the blessings. In your going out, in your coming in, in your lying down, in your rising up. When they ask you what did you gain from the camp meeting, tell them what everybody say. But say this, the Lord told me. Say it. He shall command his blessings upon me. Don't remember what I said because I told you nothing. God told you. And if God says it, it shall be done. Did you hear me? Your miracle will astonish you very soon. When I was in charge of paying the salary of our staff, every month end, I almost have high blood pressure because the people were too many. When God took over, not, not just snakes that left Africa to Miami Zoo, check began to come from there. 
from Detroit, from Baltimore, from all over the world, to say, Papa, the vision is from God. We will carry the load together. Now, poor people don't do this. I'm no more poor. I'm rich. Prosperity to me is no more a slogan, it's a reality. Do you hear me? Ask her. Time will come. You open your food savings. You don't know where to turn. You force chicken to the fridge and turkey comes. You force it to one corner, beef come. T-bone steak come. You force Fanta inside, Coca-Cola comes. The Lord shall command his blessings. Guess what? He added no sorrow to it. Raise your two hands. Lift up your hands, whether it's one or two. Say with me, dear Father, I've heard your words. Every sin in my life, I put it in the blood of Jesus. Every iniquity, I put it in the blood of Jesus. I've heard you say, you will command your blessings upon me. Let no man or forces of darkness hinder what you, God, have sent my way. From this day, I accept the responsibility to prosper and be established in your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Whatever you give me, I will use it to serve you, to bless my generation for your good. In Jesus' name, say amen. amen. Now open your eyes and look at me. I have covenant from God. Genesis 12, 3. What I bless on earth is blessed in heaven. And God promised to bless them that bless me.